want to draw for the business in the spotlight. And the winner is Home Sweet Home, Kyle Martin. Get out your red tickets. Uh, the door prize has been provided by Ohio County Healthcare. So whoever wins, I'm sure it's going to be a really good gift. 609-017. You get it? If it's all it's all good to you. All right, Brian Belcher, I'm going to call on him to introduce the speaker. Okay, we are happy to have Ohio County Healthcare. Did I say that right? Yeah. You did. New brand, new colors, a lot of fun, exciting things going on at the hospital, great things for our community. They're going to share with us some of those here. So, without any further ado, please welcome Cece, and she will fill us in. Thank you. there on the edge of his seat. He's not going to be able to do this. He's used to me. He is. There you go. Ha! Look at that. Okay, I cannot stay behind a podium. All of us in this room know and have we worked together many years. It's impossible for me to contain myself back there. Ohio County Healthcare loves to host the Chamber of Commerce. We've done it yearly for as many years as I can remember, Judy. I know every long as you have been here. And we like to use this as an opportunity just to share with our community what's going on in our healthcare system. As Brian referenced, we are still so excited and reinvigorated by our new brand, Ohio County Healthcare. Uh, many of you in this room probably still say Ohio County Hospital, and that's okay. That was our brand since 1956. But we chose Ohio County Healthcare because we wanted to tell that story of what happens beyond the walls of the hospital. How we're out of the community trying to improve the health of the community through a full continuum of care. So that's our primary care, specialty care, hospital care. Um, Judson is timing me because you all know how I am when I start talking about my health care system. I go on and on. So he has given me a strict 10 minute limit. Okay. Um, you have a, a flyer in front of you. Um, that list, it's your most current version. It has all of our recent medical staff transitions. The front of it, it lists all of our hospital services. And um, just some noteworthy um, additions to this Ohio County Healthcare flyer is uh, Dr. Joel Johnston. Very, very familiar with Dr. Johnston from the ER, many years in our ER. Um, he has recently transitioned out of our ER services into Ohio County Family Care. We're very excited to have Dr. Um, Johnston in that role. He's board certified family medicine. Family medicine is his roots. And um, while he has served our ER well for many years, we're excited to have him in that new role. Um, we have also transitioned in our Beaverdale, Ohio County Family Care Office. If you'll notice, we've brought Dr. Stephen Mills. Dr. Mills has been practicing with us for almost a decade now. He was one of the very first physicians I recruited. So I always feel a little aged when I talk about how long he has been here with us. Um, Dr. Mills has moved to our Beaverdale office and Miss Vanessa Price. Many of you from Ohio County are familiar with Vanessa. Vanessa and Chuck are a long time Ohio County, um, lifetime Ohio County residents. And we're especially proud to have Vanessa back into our family care setting because it kind of ties us back to that legacy of her father-in-law, Dr. Price, when he practiced family medicine. So it was really nice for us to bring her back into that family medicine role and kind of continue that legacy of care for this community. Um, I think that covers most of our medical staff transitions, but just keep this, it's a great reference tool. Also on the table in front of you, your gift today, new little white box, it's a nice power pack. Um, many of us don't go anywhere without our phones, so this is just a nice reminder of we're here to keep you powered up, keep you healthy. Keep you moving through life. That's what our healthcare system is here for. So with that, I'm going to cover real quick just some highlights, and I have and some exciting news to share with you all today. Okay. Oh, if I have to call Jetson up here, something that's set. Better yet. Yeah. 
You're going to do, oh, you are such a good guy. So with that, I probably really need to do a few introductions. Michelle Osborne, if I could have you stand for me before you flip over. I know you can fix it, Judson. I have such faith in you. This is Michelle Osborne. Michelle has joined us just in the last three months. She is our newest member of our medical staff. Um, you don't see her because she works in um, our long-term care facilities. We strongly believe that good health care is that continuum of care. In our healthcare system, we all use one electronic medical record. So, for instance, if there has been a patient that has been in our family medicine office or in our ER, Michelle cares for those patients once they're in that long-term care or nursing home setting. And she has access and oversight from all of our our physicians who call on the <coughs> hospitals, but she provides that great daily care. Ms. Osborne comes to us with a long, long history of wound care services and long-term care, and with um, we're so proud to have her as part of our system. We think that she's going to help us grow in many, many different areas. So thank you, Ms. Osborne, for joining us today. Here with us is Judson Hunter. Judson is one of our, um, he's our manager of our human resources departments. Judson, how long have you been with Hawkeye Healthcare? Seven years. How long have you been with the Chamber Board? Five. Five years. Five years. Um, we believe it's very important that we be part of the community, not just in providing health care, but in just providing the fabric and the infrastructure of our community. Look at that, Judson, you fixed it. So, what we always like to be able to do is demonstrate our economic impact. What would happen if a Hawkeye Healthcare was not in your community? And I bring that up because let's face it, healthcare is a tough business. We see hospitals our size daily across the nation that are no longer in business. We think that we continue to thrive and show financial success year after year because of the people in this room. Your loyalty to our system, your belief in our healthcare system, and your support of our healthcare system. When we were here last year, we had 450 employees. So that's 15 employees we've added this year. That may not seem like a lot, but the next slide I'm going to show you the economic multiplier of what that really means. We increased our wages from 17.5 million last year to over almost 21 million this year. Um, it's a large payroll. It's probably one of the largest payrolls in our county because a lot of that payroll was 38 medical providers. That's physicians and nurse practitioners. I mean, a couple of million of that is probably Ms. Osborne's alone. <laughs> she wishes. <laughs> she wishes. Um, but from that salary, we're able to um, generate back to our community, our county, our city, um, over our almost, our almost 400000 in occupational tax. Last year, that was about three hundred and fifty. So just by adding those 15 employees, we had about three more million in salaries, and we were able to increase, this was out of just about 340, our occupational tax. And that's part of that value that we try to add to our community on a daily basis. And that's what you look like. $21 million in payroll outside of the hospital or outside of our healthcare system, that supports 300 other jobs in the, uh, the community. That may be because we have a hospital here and we have a health system and we have 38 providers, Kyle has home sweet home care and that takes referrals into his business for that home care. That may be anyone in this room, our trusted partners at First United as we do our banking. Across the room, Limestone, all the banks in our community, Tiffany, when our employees come to Persimmons and they shop in that boutique, we are here to make sure we have a thriving economy full of physical therapy when our patients go into our therapy services. Across the board, we try to make sure that we're supporting um, not only our own employees, but other businesses as businesses in the Hawk County area, and really the region. Our healthcare system now covers Butler County. We have a family care office in Butler County. We also have two specialty offices in the Davis County area. Um, that $21 million in payroll generates about another $5 million uh, in purchases from local companies. And we estimate that our employees spend about $6.5 million a year in purchases across our community. So that's just some of the benefits of making sure you have local health care and a strong, vibrant health care system. 
Our goal each year is to increase access to care. We will not be able to um, provide every service needed for your health. We are not that type of hospital. But our goal is every year that when I come before you, I'm able to tell you about some additional things we're doing so that you don't have to travel out of this community for health care. Um, in 2018, we treated around 130 patients. Um, I think the last number I reported in 2017 was like 100,000. So we definitely have growth. We're excited about that growth. But one thing we did is we brought in this new logo and this new vision, these new colors. Beyond that visual identity, we wanted to look into our own healthcare system and think, what does OCH mean? Last year when I was before you, we talked about that OCH is Ohio County Healthcare, but it's our vision. It's outstanding care here. And that here, by our governing board, is in Ohio County. We want to keep those same figures we were showing you earlier local here in Ohio County. So then we have to think, if we're going to provide services to Ohio County, how do we make them outstanding? So we meet monthly with different members of our leadership team. They meet with their staff. And we have a vision, which we all remember. A vision tells us where we're going. Doesn't mean we're hitting this mark every time, but it's the direction we all want to as an organization to move towards. And our vision is outstanding care here. That's every location, every encounter, every time. So if you come in the doors of anything that's part of the Ohio County Healthcare Continuum, our vision is we're going to provide outstanding care to you. One way we looked at that was we are a busy, busy society. I have three kids. I have the beauty and wonder of getting to sit on numerous uh, committees and boards that, that, that keep me pulled in different directions. It's hard for me sometimes to make an appointment and sit in my doctor's office for an hour and a half to be seen. We are a society that we want instant health care. Well, we can't accommodate that every time. What we did focus on this year was expanding the hours of our primary care practices to better meet the needs of our patients. So for example, when we moved Ohio County Family Care Beaverdale to the Beaverdale office, they changed their mentality is you don't have to have an appointment. You walk in for family care. Our numbers have skyrocketed in our Beaverdale clinic. They also opened at seven in the morning to five at night. Because they think, you know, you might need to get into the doctor before you go to work, or before your kid has to be in school. So that is what we're looking for, opportunities to continue to increase access to care that meets the needs of our patients. When we, um, we added a second provider in our Butler County, our neighbors <coughs> in the north, um, we added Saturday hours. They were a community that had no south. Sorry, thank you, gentlemen. I am geographically challenged. <laughs> our neighbors to the south. Um, they do not have weekend care. They had to drive to Ohio County or they had to drive to Bowling Green. So we looked at that, we met with their community leaders, we said, what do you need? And they said, we need a place to go on the weekends if somebody's sick. So we expanded our hours in Butler County and we were able to add Saturday hours. And then our quick care. How many people have used our quick care? Everybody loves quick care. It is a great quick access point into a healthcare system. But we noticed our quick care was kind of, kind of slow care because the volumes were so big. So what we did is we now rotate at all times to nurse practitioners out of our quick care service to help speed up those times. And then we also increased our weekend hours. We went open Monday through Friday, 7 to 7. Again, that early morning, evening hours. But on the weekends, we opened a little earlier. We went to 9 to 5 on the weekends so that you're not waiting until 10 o'clock or 11 o'clock to get health care on the weekends. With that, some of our, when I was here last, um, last spring, we talked about our new surgical facilities. Our existing surgical facilities have been there since 1956. Our surgical volumes grow and grow and grow. And um, we were very fortunate that it has grown to the point that we need bigger rooms and more space to provide those larger services like orthopedic surgeries. Dr. Phil Hurley joined us full-time two years ago after part-time for many years. 
And when he came on board, we had to, we had to make our car operating rooms bigger to accommodate those total hips and joints that he likes to take care of for us and that we like to do here in our own community. Um, we have then, since then, brought on Dr. Robert Knox as an ENT service surgeon. He was here with us last year. And then we have um, several other surgeons that you'll see on your list that have increased their surgical visits. Um, with that, it was time to not make a separate surgical center. I've asked, people have asked me that quite a bit. This will literally be a new addition onto our hospital. Right behind Ohio County Healthcare, there is a, uh, the road, what's that road name? Do you know? Okay. The road right behind our hospital, the big gravel parking lot, that road will no longer have access for driving. It will be blocked off and then we will be able to build in that um, gravel parking lot and that will be straight out from our hospital. We couldn't have done this without our fiscal court. I want to recognize Judge Johnson and Sam Small, our magistrates, our, our fiscal court, our judges, this, this, they came along beside us, they recognized the need of this for our community, and they helped us to go ahead and secure the bonds. That's a process we're in right now. We're in funding. We're um, using USDA, which can take a long, long time. <laughs> so we're about six more months into the financing stage, and our fiscal court has been so easy to work with and so supportive of coming alongside us. It's going to be about a 10 to 12 million dollar build. When we build that, we're going to use some of that money to do some other new things to our health care facilities. We're excited about that. And um, we're excited to be able to bring you more information that as it rolls out. One thing that, that it will prompt for us is we've got to bring some more surgeons in. I got to spend a lovely two days last week with a general surgeon. And she was a phenomenal candidate, and it was such a joy to show her the Ohio County community and introduce her to people like you in this room and show her the value and the warmth of life in Ohio County. And it's just, it always makes me very proud to get to share that. We couldn't have this expansion without you guys, and you all creating this community that we get to recruit people to. And then, oops right over it. Our big announcement is Blaine Piper, our CEO, is not with us today. He is actually traveling back from Arkansas where he met with Dr. Nicole Akers. She is a family medicine physician who signed to join us in healthcare coming in October of this year. So we're very pleased to welcome Dr. Akers to our family medical staff. Dr. Akers grew up in Michigan. She is married to a med surge nurse of 20 years, and um, she, they haven't been married 20 years. He has 20 years experience. <laughs> and they have two beautiful young sons, about three years old and a year and a half. And you know what sold me on her? She said, I want to live in the community where I practice. I want to be part of the fabric of the community. And so we love that about Dr. Akers. So if anyone in this room has land for sale, She's looking for about 40 acres. She has some big dogs and a fish tank. I don't think the fish tank's going outside, but she threw that away. <laughs> um, she wants lots of room to put an orchard in. She wants some honey <coughs> land, and she'd like some land to do a little ATV. So if anybody in this area knows of something that would meet that uh, need, let me know at the hospital, because we're going to help her make sure she finds a good home here in Ohio County. <coughs> Um, with that, school's almost out. It's heating up outside. So that means it's what? What time is it, Joshua? On stay and play time. Okay, a little more excitement. <laughs> On stay and play. <laughs> Joshua Edmondson is another one of our high school hospital um, employees. He works in the office with Blaine and I. Everybody probably just needs to give him a hand because he has to put up with Blaine and I every day. <laughs> to our chaos. Okay, my chaos. Blaine's pretty calm himself. So, um, Ohio County Healthcare, we make sure that we invest back in the community. Each year we have, we range from anywhere about forty to 50000 in community investments. That may be through our health coalitions, that may be through sponsorship of local activities, that may be through wonderful, tremendous events like Longest Day of Play. Many of you in this room have given me your sweat equity for many years at Longest Day of Play. Um, last year we had just under 1,100 people at the park, and they have a great time. We try to model for them increased physical fitness, 
and we try to show them increased physical fitness by having games and activities that they can take back into their own homes, their own families, and replicate with the goal of reducing obesity for our community. Um, in order to make this happen, we have about 200 volunteers that come out. Who here has been at Longest Day of Play? Working, yes. Yes, look at you guys. So everybody, your forms are on the back on that table. Just sign up again. <laughs> June 13th, we still need to get our activity stations um, underway, and, but we couldn't do that if our whole community didn't come together. So please, please, please take a flyer, post it in your own um, organization, share it with family and friends. Better yet, take that registration form, fill it out, and come out, and it's hot. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna try to sugarcoat it. It's a hot day and it's a long day, but there's something magical about a certain point when you, you top a hill there at the park, Shannon, you've been there, and you see hundreds of kids laughing and playing. And it playing outside like all of us did growing up, just having a blast, getting dirty, climbing and jumping, and it's, it's a wonderful day. So I hope that um, you'll come be part of that. Y'all's favorite slide, questions. <clears throat> I never feel successful unless someone asks me a question. Okay, I'm gonna go home a failure. Ah, there we go. <laughs> you going to, Thank you. Going to neighboring counties. Yes. Uh, when I grew up, my my family was in Clay County. Yes. And we they had a hospital there. Yes, they did. The Clay County had a hospital. Yeah, of course they closed years ago. Mm -hmm. um, is there much of anything? In Very a, interesting question. Like Very timely well, question. Well, I know it's limited population. No, um, we actually were very active. Our hospital actually supports the McLean County Health Coalition. So um, one thing we try to do is to help improve the health of their community through their health coalition. We <coughs> probably be at McLean County, Butler County, Davis County. Health care needs decisions need to be made by local people. We have no intention of selling out. We have no intention of being bought out. McLean County is kind of a good example of that. They don't have a health care system of their own anymore. We think it's important that the people in this room make the health care decisions for our friends and neighbors. McLean County, through our health coalition, they help to help guide those decisions. We've actually, at different times, looked at uh, opening um, a clinic in McLean County. So I think they do need some increased access to care. Um, we met with their former judge executive. We're excited that Ed West has taken that role. Ed's a great friend to Ohio County Health Care. He's a great friend to Ohio County. Judge, I think he's going to be a good neighbor to have as a judge executive. So I think that's a timely question and something we continue to explore. So thank you for bringing that up. Ah, uh, Jody Fleener. Well, I don't have a question. I have a comment. Um, tonight is our survivor dinner for Relay, yes. and the hospital has sponsored that dinner for years, and it just ties along with the health care. We love to honor our survivors and their caregivers. That dinner's tonight. If you know of anybody, don't be an invite. Just come on in. That's your invite. But we're very, very happy that the hospital teams with Relay for Life and does that for us. It's a huge undertaking, and thank you very much. Well, that's very kind. Thank you. We like to be partners in anything that has to do with improving the health, or just anyone on their health care journey. Um, with that, if there's no more questions, I'm going to turn it over to Doug Evil. Heart. Everhart. Everhart. I was so close, Doug. So <laughs> she keeps trying so hard. I, am, I have gotten the pleasure of getting to know Doug in the last six months. Um, Doug's organization was kind enough to invite me to sit on their um, their regional board of directors. But before that, I got to work with some great people in this room, like Shannon and others, on our United Way fundraising efforts within our own individual um, organizations, as well as the allocation of those funds. Ohio County raised 60000 Doug, just over 60000 in this last um, year. So we met together at uh, First United last month and we were able to allocate $60,000 out specifically in the Ohio County community. And that came from the employees who work here. Those are employee fund drives. Our hospital um, has um, participated in the United Way fund drives for many years. We believe in United Way. We believe in the power of that collective good. You give your money and you get to make an impact by joining that money with others. Um, one, some of the organizations that got 
that 60,000 was our food pantry. We want to address um, hunger, food insecurity in our county. And we think a food pantry is a great way to do that. The Equestrian Society, um, our local senior center here for Mills on Wheels. Again, hunger, hunger for those vulnerable populations like our children and our seniors. Uh, but one exciting thing we got to put some money towards this year was 211. And that is what Doug is going to talk a little bit about, and he's going to turn it over to our friend Blaine to describe. Um, 211, without still the thunder, is a community resource guide. And I'm going to tell you guys, we as a health coalition attempted to keep an updated community resource guide for years. And no sooner than we get it updated and handed out in the community, then it was outdated. What Doug's going to do is going to talk to you about how, from this point on, we're going to be able to, with all of our organizations at our fingertips, connect our Ohio County citizens to needed resources. So with that, the is yours. Thank you so much. With Boyner. Sure. Here we go. <coughs> so what 211 is, everybody knows what 911 Everybody's heard 811. Well, what this is, is 211 is a phone number that you call in case you have an emergency, if you have needs for health and human services from all different types of programs, from all different types of services. And we'll have Blaine come on up. And, uh, and let me introduce Blaine as he comes. This is Blaine Matthew. He's with United Way. He's a 211 project coordinator. And United Way is very proud to announce that we're launching this and have launched it across the Grand Region. And so anybody can call from their home, from their community, and find out what services they need. The number one problem identified by the Audubon area said that people didn't know where to turn for services. One of the things identified here by residents here in our community is talking about they need help in getting connected to the right places. Two on one takes care of that. Two on one solves everything. Thanks so much Judge for having a kickoff and, uh, and helping us do all this and bring this into the community and we'll go from there. At this time, I want to introduce Mr. Blaine Matthew as project coordinator. He's going to get into the specifics about the program and uh, enjoy. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Doug. Like I said, my name is Blaine Matthew. I'm the project coordinator and 211 specialist for United Way of the Ohio Valley. And like you said, we launched uh, 211 here in Ohio County about two weeks ago. So we're excited to get that going. And what 211 is, is a free and confidential information referral service for health and human services. And our vision for this is a community where everyone has access to, uh, to services in order to thrive. We, we realize that the, the biggest issue in getting help is actually knowing uh, where to find the help. And we think uh, 211 really closes that gap. So what you can call 211 for? Basically anything from prenatal care to end of life care and everything in between. If you need uh, somewhere to stay for the night, if you need uh, food, or if you need help with paying your electric bill, you can call 211 and can connect you with uh, the resources in your area. And what we're looking to do is grow and expand our database. Uh, right now we have, I think, actually over 1,400 different programs listed for the grad area. And we are wanting to uh, meet with people uh, in respective communities and take a look at uh, agencies that are you know, in Ohio County, in McLean County, and really see you know, what we're missing, get them listed so that we have an up-to-date and accurate uh, resource guide. And there's several ways to get a hold of 211. Uh, you can call 211. There's also the 844 number. You can text your zip code to 898-211. Visit us online at greenriver211.org. Uh, we also have a smartphone application. It's currently only available for the Android system, but we are working with Apple to get that up and going. And of course, it is available 24-7 uh, at 365. And I'm actually going to have uh, CC come up here oh, and do a test call to show you all really uh, how the 211 service works. Which phone am I using, Blaine? Oh, like okay. Yeah. My goodness. Come around. Sure. So, am I doing, is this like, well, I'm not going to give my real social birthday to this one, right? Like we did last time. <laughs> <laughs> not that I don't trust everyone in this room. <laughs> it's not extremely loud. So. Thank you for calling Green River Q11. All calls may be recorded for quality assurance. If this is a life threatening emergency, please hang up and dial 911. Para Espanol, Marquesos. 
for food assistance, press 1. For housing, shelter, or payment assistance, press 3. Y'all just in suspense what I pressed, aren't you? If you would prefer not to hold, you can ask to receive a call back. We will retain the place in queue and call you when your call would have been answered. To receive a call back, press 1. Otherwise, please stay on the line. So I we did access this by calling to the Hello, thank you for calling United Way 211. My name is Rakia. How can I help you? Good morning, ma'am. I'm calling because I wanted information about our local food pantry. Mm -hmm. Can I have your name, please? Cecilia Robinson. I'm an official there. <laughs> Okay. Um, and just to let you know, I'm just asking some questions. This will be a one-time set of questions. So if you ever call us back in the future, we can um, bypass the questions and go directly to their food, to the resources that you need. Excellent. And with that being said, um, please save that information with the last four of your social. One, two, three, four. <laughs> Are you a military veteran? I am not, but I'm thankful for them all. <laughs> and ma'am, this is a test call. We're demonstrating the 211 system. So if I give you some odd answers, just roll. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think that's the one, two, three, four. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you, you, you're on to our game. Okay. Um, so you in front of our Ohio County Chamber of Commerce. We have about 70 people that were demonstrating the value of 2112. So you better do a good job. <laughs> okay, one moment. Do you understand that the information you give to me is entered and stored in an electronic database? All records are confidential and will be shared with only agencies to get permission to. That is I understand. Understand. I'm sorry? I said I understand. I accept the terms of agreement. Um, what is your the proof? Four two three four seven. Your birthday? Two sixteen. Nineteen seventy. Okay, I'm forty nine. <laughs> Are you there, ma'am? <coughs> she said you were too old. Yes, she did. You need to know how to feed yourself. Why? Why call it me? <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. That gives you a general preview of it. When we called last week, um, she actually, I gave her my social, and I put the last four digits of my social, which she should have been able to do at that point. When we called, she connected us immediately and gave us the information for the local food pantry. Right. Um, and one thing I think Blaine's going to share with you is how that we're going to get our information as a community into the system, as well as she should have, if we could have proceeded with this, she would have identified that I had called multiple times. And that's one thing is um, part of our health care community I love that I know Blaine's going to talk about is it's not just connecting the person to the service as needed. It's identifying that there's a problem and calling back and saying, you and your family have called for housing and food five times. How can we help you? Does it, do we need to go to OCTC and help you get your GED or get a, a, one of our great manufacturing certifications? so that we can help break that cycle of poverty. So Blaine, I'll put Hot Jack in your sure, presentation. No. You did a great job. So, uh, like she said, when you give your social security number and your name, they do store that in their system. It's kind of a one-time thing. So the next time that you call in, or the third or fourth time that you call in, they have this really, this track record of why you've called into 211. And after you've called about three or four times, they're really gonna ask you, you know, is there something else going on? Is there a bigger issue? You know, is it really that your light bill needs to be paid, or is there, you know, an addiction problem that you need to you know, really address? 
So it's basically like having a case manager over the phone available to anybody at any given time. Another really important part of the 211 is the 211 count. Yeah, I think that we drop service there, so. No, I mean, uh, can we connect to internet from the laptop or not? Okay. So the 211 account is actually a live, um, you know, public access website where all the 211 calls are tracked. If someone calls in in Ohio County, or 300 people call from Ohio County for the food pantry, that's all going to be available to the public shown on our 211 counts uh, site. And it's also going to show how many people uh, called in and didn't receive services. <coughs> because when you call 211, they offer a callback feature. And they're going to call you back between 3 and 10 days after you receive, after you place the call and ask you, did you receive services at where we sent you? And you're going to tell them yes or no, and that's going to be stored in the 211 uh, counts database. So you're really going to get a good look at who's calling for what in your community and where the gaps truly are. And so, you know, when we go, when you go looking for uh, grants and see where the need is in the community, you can use 211's data to really prove your point. So I'm going to leave it open for questions. So you brought collateral information. Yes. We threw a lot of information at you today. <coughs> 211, obviously it's an emergency, you dial 911. But on um, the United Way's table back here is a lot of information on the 211 program. Sure. And I encourage you to take that. This is only going to be successful if we share it with our community members, if we share it within our businesses. And it's, it's an incredible tool for our community. Definitely. Thank you to United Way for your work. on to our elections of 2019-20 of officers and directors. Um, so I would ask the new nominees to stand when I introduce uh, your name. Joe Beth Embry with Ohio County Tourism, or Beaver Dam Tourism. Did Brian have to leave? Brian Wilson with Slickback is one of them. Uh, Jeanette Weedman with Kennergy. And Brittany Bowers with Purdue. And now, if all the officers and directors would stand. Yes. Okay. Now I would like to ask for a motion to accept the nominees for this year. A motion. CC made a motion. A second. TC. All in favor, raise your hand. Motion passed. Thank you. Uh, at the next meeting, we will hold uh, installation of officers and directors at our June meeting. Now, moving on to announcements. This weekend is the Strawberry Festival. Joe Beth, would you like to give some information on the Strawberry Festival? What's going on? Yeah. Um, our 22nd annual Strawberry Festival will kick off Friday night. Um, with a lot of our activities being Saturday, and that's pageants. If you want to be a vendor or want to enter your kid, grandkid, in a pageant, you can still do that. And those forms are available at Beaver Dam City Hall and at several local businesses. This year, our big um, attraction is a dinosaur exhibit, and that's going to feature a lot of animatronic dinosaurs as well as a fossil dig. And we're excited to bring that, um, and that has different showings throughout the day. Um, we have the cruise in at the park, and we'll have the trolley um, from Owensboro that we get so that you can park um, conveniently and ride that trolley to all of the different attractions as it's grown. We've just kind of had to expand it to different places. So it's looking like good weather and we're really excited about the 22nd Annual Strawberry Festival. And then Monday is the Pride and that's at 10 o'clock, of course. Um, and it wouldn't be Beaver Dam Tourism if I didn't plug the amphitheater. Our next show is June 8th with Brett Michaels. And then the following weekend is Oak Grove Medicine Show with Molly Tuttle. So those tickets are still on sale um, and are selling really well. So we're excited about all that's going on in Beaver Dam. Thank you. Thank you, Joe Beth. Also, um, this weekend opens the Summer Farmer's Market, correct? Yes. Yeah, so that's always always something good to go. It, they got everything. It's not just fruit and vegetables. It's everything. 
So, um, golf, I was going to have Brian's update on the golf scramble. Do you want to? We have the golf scramble June 8th, and we have applications back here with Judy. Please join the teams. How many we got, Judy? Four? Five? Five. Okay. And then um, CC already announced the longest day of play on June 21st. And those are back there at the back. Oh, we, we had to change it this year. Oh, June 13th. It always is oh, 13th. 13th. Yeah. Right. And please vote. <laughs> Do I have any other announcements? Anybody have anything? Any, there's anyone at the table, if you can beat your co-workers or to it, there's uh, somebody take the cup home oh. on the table. And the minutes. And the minutes. Oh. And our next meeting would be June 19th. Hope to see everybody here.